in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host, the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and perhaps many other places. On the internet, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I would first like to thank brother, uh, student and minister of action, Andre Edmund, uh, 69, who from now on will be known as brother extra extra 100 for that thought provoking and wonderful introduction. And I would like just to put a little more clarification or emphasize this particular issue just a little bit more. Again, just because we disagree with one another, just because we have a difference of opinion does not mean that we hate somebody. I am very sure that you have had disagreements and you do not carry the same opinion as your mother, as your father, as your uncle, grandfather, as your siblings, as anyone you love, your children or your husband or wife. We will always have disagreements. We will always have various opinions. But this does not mean that I hate my mother, I hate my father, grandfather, my siblings, my children, or anyone that I simply disagree with. That should not mean that we hate somebody. Everyone has the right to express a difference of opinion because that might be the opinion that is necessary in order for us to be successful. However, in civilized society, majority rule. So if the majority rule and they, their uh, law, their policy, their thinking is enacted and they begin to fail, they begin to cause the country, the neighborhood, the town failure and bring more problems, more suffering. And then you realize that another opinion, if you had listened, could avert that suffering, that oppression. Then that's how it is. I don't know how to express it, except those of whom opinion you did not heed, they can tell you, I told you so. So instead of saying, I hate you, sometimes why don't we just take into consideration another point of view? We should not be so arrogant to always claim or believe that we know everything. We don't know everything. I've always said in this ministry, I don't know everything. I don't know it all. Don't want to know it all. I can't know it all. So I am relying on difference of opinion. I don't expect Brother Andre to think like me. I don't expect Brother Andre to dress like me. I want Brother Andre different because we need a difference of opinion. We need different ideas to solve these very serious problems that we have in our community and within our own personal selves. 
there are very wicked demons inside our soul that we got to work on. And once we work on ourselves, that will help us deal with that which is in the society. But if you are a demon, don't expect anything of good to come from the society because the society is made of demons. So why do we in America, you think nasty, you walk nasty, you foul mouth, you have a foul filthy mentality, but yet it's still at the same time, you want good things to come to you. That's not how it works. You get what you ask for. You are a devil, you are a demon, you're nasty, you're foul mouth, you're selfish, greedy, and envious. That's what you're going to get. This is the result of it. America is the result of all this type of mindset. So why are you complaining if you don't want to change yourself? Why you don't want to take the advice from somebody else who is directing or trying to tell you a better way? Because clearly the ways that we have chosen does not work, is not working. But that shows our arrogance. And when somebody shows our arrogance, show us who we are for real. Make us look at the man in the mirror and we don't like it. We want to get angry at the person who places up the mirror instead of saying, that's me. I got to deal with it. I'd rather get angry at those who hold up the mirror because in your mind, you're delusional. You really don't think that you are whacked out. You really don't believe something is wrong with you. But look at the world that you live in. Look at the society that you built. Look at your family and the friends you chosen and the people you marry and the children that you created. Look at all this, your country, your nation, and look at the peoples of the earth. Is this a beautiful place? No, it is not. Is it a peaceful place, loving place? No, it, it is not. So that's why you turn to religion. So you can live a fantasy through your religion instead of really working on who you are in order to make the peace that you find in religious teachings in your fantasy world make it a reality you don't want to change because because in reality you have fallen in love with evil you have fallen in love with the ways and the lifestyle of this world that was the problem in religious scriptures with the wife of the prophet called Lot. The God gave Lot and his family specific directions that you need to leave the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. You must leave and when you leave, do not turn around. Do not look at the city. I'm getting ready to destroy it. And as the prophet and his family began to leave the city, Lot's wife decided to disobey the God and take a peek, had to take a look at Sodom and Gomorrah. And as soon as she took that little peek, it says in these religious scriptures that she turned into a pillar of salt. And why did she turn back? You would think that people who are righteous, if you have a good heart, you would want to get out of such an evil place. Why would you want to turn back and look at it? She turned back to look at this place because there was still some kind of love for this wicked, condemned, unrighteous place. A place that God, him or herself, have decided must be destroyed. And that's how it is in America. The black man and woman in America, we've been here for so long. The thought of America falling. The thought of America being destroyed is beyond our comprehension. We really don't want to hear that. Some of us clap. But we really don't mean it because America is all we know. Because if America fall, if America is destroyed, what's going to happen to us? The God said, just leave. The God told Lot 
and his family just leave. Don't you have faith in God? That's what y'all tell me, you believers. But the first thing you cry, what we going to do? Don't you have faith in God? You mean to tell me a person like myself that claim I don't believe in God, I have more faith in a God than you do? My perception of God is different than yours because the God that I'm looking for is the use of my brain and the God within myself. Just go. You don't have to have a plan. Just leave. And don't look back because this is about to be destroyed. That is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in his teachings that America would be destroyed and it would be burned to a crisp. And he said in his teaching that America would be destroyed, this place will be destroyed so uh, bad that nothing will grow here, even a blade of grass, for hundreds of years. But yet you are trying to find some kind of way to justify wanting to continue to live and socialize and be on this land. This is not for you. After the destruction of America, your generations might come back, but this is not for us. We are supposed to exodus this place. We want to talk about the real teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and those who really know the teachings of Elijah Muhammad understand that what I'm saying is true based on his teaching, not my interpretation. You can find it in any of the messenger's books. Oh, excuse me, it's, it's hot and we better enjoy the heat while it lasts because it might be a very, very cold winter. Now, just because we disagree doesn't mean that somebody hates somebody. We should listen to other points of view. There are no all-knowing people on this planet. And in religious teachings, it says that wisdom can come from the mouth of babes. Even a child can tell you something. But you don't want to listen to me because I'm not famous. You don't want to listen to me because I don't represent some God. It has to come from out of some religious book, the Quran or the Bible. But in your religious teachings, it says very clearly, and I hear y'all tell it, it says, God uses whom he pleases. It is not necessary that God will use somebody that quotes from the Quran or quotes from the Bible. God can use anybody. God can use the devil himself to do his will. That's what y'all teach, but you really don't believe it. Because clearly your way is not working. Because you're not looking, you're not looking to hear the voice of God. You're celebrity seekers. You're not listen, listening, nor are you looking really for the truth. You just want to be satisfied in what you think you have as truth. I am a truth seeker. Wherever I can find truth, wherever I can find knowledge that I can use to benefit myself, I'm on it. And that's the way you should be too. What I loved about the great warrior Shaka Zulu. I was watching the 1978 uh, movie called Shaka Zulu and one of uh, Shaka Zulu's aides 
was telling Shaka why the people love him. Why do the people love me, Komoni? I think that's how he said. <laughs> he said, Shaka, the people love you because you keep them in reality, not spirituality. Shaka is not teaching them a religion. Shaka did not teach his people the worship of a god. Shaka was guiding his people into just accepting their reality. Y'all don't know nothing about that because we have we are religious-sized. Is that a word? Religious-sized? We've been conditioned to believe in gods and spirits and spooks. What I loved about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was that his teaching, that was the first time that I was introduced to a teaching that made things real. Things that you could sense with your brain. You could smell it. You could see it. You could taste it. Elijah Muhammad taught us that God was a man. Is that right? God is a man. And a man is like yourself. And we are real. Elijah Muhammad taught against spookism. And Elijah Muhammad taught against mystery gods, mystery things. Elijah Muhammad was trying to teach us out of fantasy and delusions. Before the honorable Elijah Muhammad left, this world, contrary to some other people's belief. And I would say that Elijah Muhammad is dead. He is no longer here with us. He is deceased until there's other proof to show otherwise. Not spookism, not belief, viable, clear evidence to show that this man is still alive. Because Elijah Muhammad, being his student, being one influenced by Elijah Muhammad, he taught me realism. He taught against spookism and mysteries. So if you see someone that claim and they say that they represent Elijah Muhammad and teaching Elijah Muhammad, 